did it. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking Brody Helmet, I think. Today we're going over the Webley Mark VI. Now, this is a gun that I've always wanted to own, and now I do. And now I slightly regret it, just a little bit. Now, this isn't going to be a video where I try and sell you a Webley Mark VI. If anything, it's a video telling you to not buy it. But I know you're on the toilet. I know you're watching this from the comfort of your home. Maybe you're drinking your food, eating your beer, sipping some coffee. What I really need you to do, what I really need you to do, make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to my British overlords. Um, they enjoy tea and crumpets and watching World War I reproduction movies about the Battle of the Somme. I have a YouTube channel, and so I'm required by the YouTube gods to make YouTube videos. With that being said, the Webley Mark VI is actually a pretty fun gun to shoot. So, going over the Webley Mark VI real quick. Now, this, of course, my big disclaimers are I'm no gun expert. I'm no historical <laughs> expert. If you want to watch the History in the Webley series, there is a bunch of guys on the YouTube platform that go over the extensive history of the Webley platform, like back before, like they go to like the context kings. Shooter ready. Stand by. Threat! And what they do is they go like pre-Webley. <laughs> And so, and so they go like the history of the Webley up to like certain points. It's very fascinating, but I literally just walked into a gun store. I saw it and I was like, neat. But I always wanted a Webley, so it worked out great. You know, the brake action, the top brake action of revolver series, they always get me going, if I'm being honest. I'm not a big revolver guy, but the fact that this breaks open from the top, it, it hits different, if I'm being honest with you guys. And, you know, revolvers are just like, they're like fidget spinners for men because there's a lot going on with them. There's a hammer movement, there's the wheel movement, or I should say the cylinder movement. And then you got the brake action over here. Now, normal revolvers, modern day revolvers, more conventional stuff, break to the side, which is probably more reliable. <laughs> Instead of your entire gun going hinging, it's just the cylinder that hinges out. But it's not as cool as the brake from the top. This gun wasn't too expensive, it was relatively cheap. Uh, it was about, I wanna say 500-ish. And I think there were some repro parts on it that looked clear, clear as day, like reproduction parts such as the hammer and the brake and then the trigger. I couldn't tell you too much. I bought a, a quasi holster <laughs> a lanyard and a trench whistle. Since we're going over the gear real quick, the helmet is actually my grandpa's helmet. He uh, He's no longer on this earth, but uh, this was a, a hand-me-down. I'm not sure if it was the Americanized version of, you know, what the Brody would have been, which probably is. I feel like the Brody looks a little bit different than this one, but this is all I got for props, so bear with me. Uh, I figured, I, was, I wanted to like, I had this grand vision. I'm kind of happy I didn't because I'll talk about the reliability of the gun but i had this grand vision of like doing a full world war one larp where i'm like this british officer and i got the uh i got the uh the webley i'm happy i didn't do that because i think that would have been like a bad investment of time and money for the most part because the gun is, isn't that reliable it's having some issues before we dive into the issues of the gun we'll go over the sponsor real quick snoring desert institute of gunsmithing if you wanted to take your gunsmithing to the next level beyond that bubba job you did to your mo's and the gaunt then head on over there become an accredited gunsmith it's a legit college you'll get squared away follow your dreams of becoming a gunsmith so one day maybe you can make me a cool gun that i can show off on the channel so the gun is pretty cool i um i have no no gripes with it as like a self-defense gun um, i'm not going to treat it as such a bug i'm not going to treat it as like the same standards of a self-defense gun because it's it's an old old weapon um you know i don't know where it's been how many rounds it's had through it i really walked into the gun store and i said i'll take it i think it's maybe a cylinder timing issue but there's some footage i'll throw up of trying to shoot it and it's like it takes like a full rotation of the cylinder until it starts going off right so that was kind of frustrating so for me to invest time and money into this and not have the or, or not have the performance desired for the firearm which is a shoot when i pull the trigger that's very frustrating right it's like you have one job as a firearm and that's to shoot when i pull the trigger <gasps> yet again this could just go down to timing issues um i would hope that you know british officers or british soldiers weren't using this in harm's way if they had that issue come about right i didn't have that issue when i was running the old 1911 in my old flood video we'll bring that gun back out again you know it's really cool looking at this gun because it connects you with history right it connects you with a part of human history that was very violent it was awful and that was world war one and of course this gun showed up in world war ii as well but you know it i think of this gun being more synonymous with world war one I. I think 
that I don't I don't often think of the Webley as being as prominent in World War II, at least not in my head. And because I'm more drawn to the other weapons that are cooler, and that by that point there's a lot of really cool sidearms floating around in World War II. I mean, and as well as World War One, you know, the Germans had such a cool like uh, you know, monopoly on handguns. I think they had some of the coolest handguns with their Mauser series, you know, the C96, uh, POA, all those different handguns, artillery style Luger, just a bunch of different cool handguns that they had. And they, and they were going really far with those handguns, you know, as far as making them technically like short barreled rifles, like little carbines with how they had those set up. So I made it kind of cool in that regards, because you got to think like your average soldier, your average soldier is running like a, a hunting rifle, bolt gun that's configured for battle that's essentially what they have you have a 303 round or a 30-06 round or eight millimeter mouse around it's like wild you know it's like to think about i still can't get over that that they like were like yeah this would be perfect when nobody has armor on we're using a huge hunting caliber round but whatever at least the gun is cool for that sense it's a really cool like collector's piece at least to me i wish it were performing a little bit better so if you're someone out there watching this and you're like oh i know what the issue is with that web leap um it's the, the timing of the cylinders may be off. So the ammo I was running was some Fioshi uh, 455, and maybe that was it. Maybe the ammo on that was weird, but it was running some rounds, but once it got going, it would work. So I don't know what that's about. You know, it's not like I'm trying to, yet again, sell you a, a, a Webley Mark VI. That's just not what the goal is of this channel. This, I, I like to show off firearms that I find interesting. And I, some guns I find more interesting, other guns I don't truly care about that may never appear on the channel. So <laughs> guns like this, historical guns that have, you know, a history behind them are always guns that I will find interesting and want to show off. Also, the Webley also makes me think of Battlefield 1, you know, and Battlefield 5. Technically, I believe the Webley makes an appearance in Battlefield 5. I just never use it because it's kind of trash. I miss Battlefield 1. I played a lot of Battlefield 1, if I'm being honest with you guys. There was a good amount I played. There's like a series in my life of just like non-stop Battlefield 1, and I got very good at Battlefield 1, I will say. The new Battlefield's not as good. I, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. Good. You know, I feel almost blessed with the modern convenience and luxury of firearms that we have now, where it's like I have a red dot, a flashlight, and 17 rounds in a Glock 19 or a Glock 17, or, you know, 15 rounds in a Glock 43X. And depending on what handgun you prefer, you, you can maybe have more or less, but, you know, me personally, I'm a Glock guy, and it's, it's weird to think about going back in time, you know, and, and these guys are fighting major conflicts, or maybe they carry a Webley as a personal carry gun back in the day, and that's like their interpersonal uh, self-protection gun against a criminal on the street, and they only know that they have six rounds, and that that gun has to work flawlessly in a life or death situation. Okay. And it's kind of crazy, and I do feel blessed in that regard, so that's like, yeah, I trust my modern guns a lot, but there is that thing of, is the craftsmanship of modern guns as good as these old guns because like it's just nothing but steel and you can kind of see how it's wearing away a little bit a little bit of that patina the patina looks pretty solid on it you know she is dated it's got a lot of the uh the, the royal crown stamps i'm probably saying that wrong the nomenclature wrong but it is a really cool firearm and you know yet again i do like the historical weapons because there is a different level of craftsmanship to it it's interesting to see like the carbon build up on these wings right here in front of the cylinder that is a little fun to see that the land, also lanyards, lanyards are kind of weird, dude. I, I can't imagine, like I know some guys still use lanyards today in a professional setting, and I know they probably mastered them a little bit more, but like this old lanyard, I, I felt like it got in the way a lot more than it was helping. I'm like, just hold on to your gun, you know what I mean? Revolvers are weird, and I felt like a FUD, and I'm like, maybe I am a FUD for buying a revolver, but nah, it's cool. All guns, you know, all guns have their place and purpose. If you're a firearms enthusiast like I, then there's already a chance that you want to own just about every gun you can get your hands on, uh, regardless of if they're cool or not, or, well, most guns are pretty cool actually, but regardless of if they function well or not, you still like having that piece of history because a lot of time and effort goes into making a firearm. And even back in the day, they had to go through a lot to make these guns. Gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to the algorithm God, a God of which may or may not let me monetize videos. Who knows? If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon is an excellent way to support the channel as well as merchandise. I sell merchandise on the website. All of the companies that usually sponsor this help support the channel. So if you want to take your business to them, your business supports them, which supports me. It's a nice little trickle down effect. I truly don't know how economics work. <laughs> as always, gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you all on the flip. Oh.
right then. It's Tuesday, isn't it? Gotcha! Oh god, that's really hard to climb. God damn it! God damn it, son of a bitch, motherfucker! God damn it! Did it.